So, I finally got tired of the pretty uninspiring audio quality from the microphone built into my Sony A6000 camera, so I decided to upgrade. However, this wasn't made particularly easy, thanks to Sony's decision not to include a microphone jack on the camera, and instead force you to use their very expensive multi-interface shoe microphones. In fact, the only way to get a 3.5mm jack to connect an external mic is to spend over £160 on their Bluetooth microphone system. After many hours of research into different options, I decided to get the Zoom H2N digital recorder, along with a decent quality lavalier microphone. This will allow me to both record live while filming at much higher quality with less background noise, as well as allowing me to record voiceovers like you're hearing now. I'm currently recording this using the Zoom H2N itself. Here you can see the Zoom H2N. It's a pretty neat device, not the thinnest thing in the world, but it's not exactly massive either. And now, this is the lavalier microphone I bought, which is from a company called, and no, I didn't make this up, Giant Squid Audio Lab. At £50 it's relatively inexpensive, yet after doing a bunch of research it performs really well. I was also considering the Audio-Technica ATR3350, however this requires a battery which is a bit of a faff and had very mixed reviews, many of which reported it failing fairly, fairly quickly. The other option I considered was the Rode SmartLav Plus, however since this is designed for smartphones, I would need to have bought an, ex an extra adapter for £10 to connect it to a recorder, and after some listening tests they sounded very similar, and if anything I sort of preferred the giant squid one, so I went for that. So now let's take a look at what accessories come in the box with the H2N. The first thing you get is a 2GB micro SD card. It's only 2 gigs, which isn't really much, however it's enough for some basic recordings. And it's a micro SD card, even though the thing takes full size SD cards, so you have to use the included adapter. I think it's because some of the recorders only take micro SD, so being able to just bundle this one type of card makes it cheaper across all their products. You also get a pair of alkaline AA's, which is fine. It runs on AA batteries rather than being rechargeable, so at least you get some in the box. One thing to bear in mind is how it's packaged because the, car, the SD card and batteries are hidden under these little cardboard flaps inside the box so if you didn't know they were there it would be very easy to throw the box out without realising those parts are in there so if you do get one make sure you take those out because they are actually in the box even if you can't see them You also get a couple of included software licences for both WaveLab Wave LE as well as Cubase LE I've never heard of these, I'm not a sort of audio person but I suppose if you sort of like that's, if that, that software is useful for you, you get it included I also bought the official accessory pack it normally retails for £35, however when I bought it with the recorder it only cost me £12 extra, so it seemed like a fairly reasonable thing to get. So the first thing you get in the box is a sort of nice little case for the recorder. It's fairly reasonable quality, sort of plastic on the outside, sort of zip around the outside, and it holds the recorder fairly well. It's also got a belt loop on the back if you need to carry it. So yeah, it's pretty neat to fit the recorder in. Good way to protect it from carrying, around, carrying it around really. The next thing you get is the windshield that goes over the top of the recorder. So you can use this if you're out in wind or you're potentially just talking closely to the microphone and don't want to get any pops. So this that works quite well. Fits over the top quite neatly. Also in the box you get a little remote control which plugs in. So it's got a 2.5mm jack that plugs out into the recorder. and has option for pause, marking the recording as well as start and stopping recording. And that just plugs out into the side of the recorder. So yeah, you can use that if the recorder is mounted somewhere and you want to control it from further away. You also get this little extension cable. Unfor unfortunately, it's only a 2.5mm cable, so you can't actually use it for audio equipment, but it's handy if you need to make the remote, put the remote further away. Next thing you get is this little plastic thing that screws into the bottom of the recorder. So this is designed, they call this the mic clip adapter. So I think the idea with this is if you had like a microphone stand, you could attach that onto the bottom of the recorder and slide it into the microphone stand. I suppose it also works as a handle if you wanted to hold the recorder like a microphone. So the next thing you get in the box is this little tripod, which is a fairly cheap little tripod, it's nothing that special. It feels a bit plasticky, like the legs are plastic even though it looks metal. However, it's adjustable, you, know, you can loosen the little thing off and actually sort of tilt the top if you wanted to do that. And it does do the job of holding the recorder on the desk fairly well. It's just not the best quality thing in the world, but I mean, it does the job. So the next thing you get in the box is a standard mini USB cable, so it's mini USB on one end and regular on the other, and it's a pretty long cable, so if you've got if you want to place a recorder far away from things, that's absolutely fine. And then to go along with that you get a standard USB power brick, so you can plug that into the wall. It's Zoom branded and it's made by a company I've heard of, so it looks reasonably safe and decent, so yeah, you can use that if you want to run it off the mains. Which is handy if you're using it in a stationary environment because otherwise it requires batteries. So the final thing you get in the box is this little sort of wrist strap to go in the recorder. 
However, for some bizarre reason, it doesn't actually fit. The curvature on the hook isn't isn't appropriate to fit around the clip on the machine, so you can't actually mount it. So I guess obviously if someone's like bought these and not actually realised they don't fit, but yeah, you can't actually fit it on the recorder without like bending it manually. I also bought a couple of other accessories. So I bought this 3.5mm extension cable, it's a few metres long. The microphone it doesn't have a very long cable, so I'm going to use that. And I also bought this adapter which goes into the hot shoe on the top of my camera and allows me to mount the microphone because it's just got a standard sort of tripod screw mount. So that allows me to mount it on top of the camera rather than having to like worry about separate stands for it. So now let's take a look around the outside of the device. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at the microphones. So on this side we have what's called a mid-side microphone, which is a special type of microphone that lets you adjust the stereo width. So you can do that both while you're recording and even record the raw audio and adjust the ste stereo width after the fact. Then on this side you have standard XY microphone, which is a standard stereo microphone. Then on the top of the device you find this adjustment that lets you choose what microphones to use. So there's it using the mid-side microphone. You can tell it to use both channels and you'll see that the lights come on to indicate what microphones are being used. So two channel will take the audio from both microphones and mix them down to a stereo signal. This setting will just use the XY microphone on its own. Or we can set it to four channel, which will record the record, record from both microphones into individual files, so you can have it properly separate and mix them in software. What's quite cool with these LEDs is the LEDs actually flash if you're maxing it out. So when you're doing the gain adjustment, if the LED starts flashing, you know that you're clipping and you can you should turn the gain down. So that's a pretty nice little feature. The only flaw with this is that when you put the pop shield over the top, you can't actually access those controls. On the front of the device, we can see that it has the screen, which is quite a nice clear screen with a big record button below it. On the side, we can see we have a button at the top to access the menu, as well as a little button that flicks up and down, which is labelled play, so you use that to use the playback controls as well as to navigate the menus. Then we have this knob here that lets you adjust the microphone gain. So the controls are fairly simple, they're, they're not particularly fiddly or anything, which is nice. So you have to sort of play about with the gain, but it's not too bad. And then finally we have the power switch down here, which also goes into a hold position to make it harder to switch off and sort of lock the controls on the device. On the other side, we have a 3.5mm jack for a microphone input, which I'm going to use for the lavalier, as well as volume adjustment for playback, the 2.5mm jack for the remote control, a line out, and a USB port. On the bottom of the device, you can see we have a standard SD card slot as well as a tripod mount. So the SD card is a full size SD card it takes and just pops out like you'd expect. It's just a standard SD card on the bottom. I'm just using this 8 gig one because I had it spare and it's bigger than the 2 gig one it came with, so I may as well use that one. Doesn't really make a massive difference. So now let's do some recording tests to see what this device sounds like. You're now hearing the audio coming directly from the Zoom H2N recorder. This is coming through the XY microphones on the front of the device. Now let's do a test by connecting the lavalier microphone. So you can see when we plug it in, it pops up saying external in, and the lavalier will now take over from the XY microphone. So the XY microphone will be disabled when you use the lavalier. So now that's connected, let's do a recording test. You're now hearing audio being recorded through the lavalier microphone, which is plugged directly into the Zoom H2N recorder. When the lavalier microphone is plugged in, it takes over from the XY microphone. So now let's take a look at the four channel functionality of this. So we switch the, top, the switch in the top to four channel mode, and you see the screen will update to show the recording levels from both the mid side and the XY or external microphone. So now if we start this recording, it'll record from both microphones and let us mix between them afterwards. You are now hearing audio being recorded through the lavalier microphone as well as the mid-side microphone built into the H2N recorder. So this allows me to record both what's happening in front of the recorder as well as the audio through the lavalier microphone at the same time and then mix them together and choose which audio track I want in post-production, which is really good. So now let's take a look at how you adjust the stereo with the mid-side microphone. So there's an option, a little knob on the side and you can use that and it lets you cycle through different values for the side microphones. So you can turn them off completely and get a mono signal or you can adjust the gain on the side microphones and as you can see it flashes up different angles and that's the stereo width you'll get. So that's really useful, so you can actually use that to set the stereo width of those microphones rather than being having fixed stereo width like you have for the XY. You can also tell it to record RAW, which records the individual audio tracks from the mid, side, the mid microphone as well as the side microphone separately, which means that in software afterwards you can adjust the stereo width, which is really handy. So you can adjust the stereo width in software long after it's been recorded. So now let's take a look at the feature that sold me on this microphone over the similarly priced Tascam recorders, and that is that it can act as a USB microphone which is actually how I'm recording this narration right now. Once you plug in the USB, the screen will come up where you can use it as an SD card reader or you can pick audio interface. Here you can pick the sample rate and then when you pick connect, it, the computer will detect it as a standard USB microphone, which I've noticed was supported out of the box under both Windows and Linux. Now with it connected, 
We can pick it as an input device in whatever audio program you're using, in this case I'm using Audacity, and when you hit record, it'll start recording it just like it's a standard microphone. So there you have it, that was a look at the new audio kit I've bought for the channel. So I'm very happy with it all, quite excited to start using it. So obviously this video was entirely narrated, that was just because I was actually filming the recorder so I couldn't really use it to be recording live audio while I'm filming it. However, future videos are going to be recorded using a combination of the lavalier microphone to record live narration, as well as the mid-side microphone at the same time to record any sort of noises that are happening in front of the camera. And then I might overdub certain narration over certain parts where I feel it's appropriate. So there'll be a sort of a mix of different audio there. So hopefully this will make the audio a lot clearer, easier to understand, and it means I can do cool things like narrate over bits that need clarification. So it's definitely going to be a nice upgrade. And I'm very happy with the hardware. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.